Good morning, podcast. This is the Path to Warren podcast. It is July 15th, 2020. And the, the, the theme of the podcast today is about updating your database and the, the, the best way to do that in, in business. So currently, I have a task, you know, self-tasked myself with a project um, that is pretty exciting. And I've, I found a, uh, some new techniques that I want to share um, that I think will help a lot of people. Um, so l- l- let me just set the, f- the frame of what's going on and give you a little bit of background story here. So recently uh, we created an ebook from about, it was like 12 blogs from one of our, our uh, experts. And from creating this ebook, we needed to distribute the ebook. Um, we have a database of about 7,000 plus people in it, and we have a customer, um, you know, a standard CRM system where we keep track of the database and uh, notes from customers and uh, notes on customers and things like that. It's just your standard customer service, uh, customer resource database Uh, and that system is called clarity soft that's what we use Uh, it does a pretty good job Uh, so we also use constant contacts as a way of sending out mass emails and it really has some features when it comes to uh, tracking who opened what you know it really has some some great advantages that we find is, is very helpful. So just to recap, I've got the, the constant contacts, I've got Clarity Soft, and then we have in, inside of Clarity Soft this 7,000 client database that really is like the hub of where all this information about the clients are held. Um, what I learned over the last couple weeks is that as somebody, as a client switches jobs and they're now working for a new company, their email address obviously is no longer working. So it bounces back as undeliverable and it bounces back and and, and never makes it to the client because they've switched jobs. This is pretty standard, right? (laughs) Well, over the last couple of years, uh, there's not been anybody searching and finding out where these clients have gone and tracking them down. So uh, when it came time to uh, send out this ebook and let everybody know where to find this ebook, uh, I was really excited about it. Um, our marketing coordinator in our office and I finished editing the ebook right at the about 3 30 on a Thursday well this just wasn't any Thursday this was the this was July 2nd not too long ago this is July 2nd and we were tasked with really trying to finish this ebook up there were two photos that were a little blurry so we worked until about 3 30 on that Thursday July 2nd to finish it um and understand that July 4th was on a Saturday, so July 3rd is pretty much a national holiday. Everybody and their brother is off on July 3rd on that Friday. And uh, so, so here on the 2nd, on a Thursday, around 3.30, I, I, I finished up editing this book with our marketing coordinator who's got skills in end design software. And... I, I said, hey, I'd like to start sending this out. Are you okay with me start starting to send this out? She said, yeah, it's good to go. So, wonderful. <laughs> um, so, around 4 o'clock in the afternoon, I, was, I got really excited. And it was like, oh, man, it's ready to go. So, I, I in my head, I thought about sending it to about 20 or 30 people. 
just to kind of see and gauge what the, the response would be. Um, and my plan was to just send an email and blind carbon copy these 30 people in, in, in like a blind carbon copy and send an email to myself um, and have all their email addresses hidden in the BCC line and have this link to the ebook there. Well, as I started to create the email, um, I sent it to my boss and he gave me feedback on what he would change and edit from my email. But in there, I, I said, you know, please enjoy this ebook. Um, and I hope everyone has a wonderful 4th of July. It was really, you know, wishing them a, a great weekend and, and kind of like, if you want to have some reading material over the weekend, feel free to look at this ebook. It was just a great reason. It was like an, an, an excuse, you know, to send out this ebook. Um, so around four o'clock, I had this email ready to go. I sent it around 4.30. I had the edits back from my boss and I decided to, while he, while I was waiting on him to, you know, uh, make his edits, uh, went into constant contacts and exported all of the email addresses that I had and I was trying to figure out who I'm going to send them to well when he responded back with just a simple um, edit to one part of the email in my draft email he only had one edit and he didn't say anything about you know whoa 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 I don't think we could send this out before I don't think we should send this out before the holidays. You know, he didn't say any of that. He just edited and wanted me to edit one part of uh, the email. I was like, well, man, maybe he thinks this is a great idea. Maybe he's he's okay with me sending this to everybody. Um, so I proceeded to get this Excel document after I exported it out of ClaritySoft or at, at, at a constant contact that had all these email addresses. Um, and so I'd heard that you want to not send more than 50 email addresses at, at a time. You don't want to send an email with more than 50 email addresses. That's a, the ideal number that um, a lot of these companies have for size. A lot of their servers will bounce it back and reject it if it has more than 50 emails um, in the in the BCC or in the CC or the two part of the email 50 is the, the, the key number so I try to get it around 48 or so um, well because we had 7,000 emails and my wife was planning on going to the beach that night so I didn't need to work until 8 o'clock at night sending out these emails um I decided to send them in batches of like 200, you know, 200 people per email. And uh, so what I did was I have a little system for having the Excel spreadsheet on the right side of my screen. And I would go down it and I would grab, you know, you could see as you highlight um, 50 emails or 200 emails as you're highlighting those it says on the bottom of excel on, on the bottom line how many emails you've got there um or how many cells that you've highlighted it keeps track of that so once it reaches about 200 i stop hit 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 the right button hit copy then go over to my outlook email and i go into the, the blind carbon copy and i hit paste so all 50 of those emails popped up there in the two section, I had my email address, so it looks like it's, I'm sending it to myself. Um, that's just standard for blind carbon copy. Um, and I hit send, and then I would go back to that Excel spreadsheet, and the parts that are the part that's already highlighted from the 50 or 200 that I had just sent to, that part's going to be already highlighted. I I would go to the the button where it changes the the text color 
I changed that to red. Red red means I've already sent it to them. That's just my little code for trying to not, you know, send two emails to the same people. Um, and then I grab the next 50, go over, paste it into the blind carbon copy. Uh, and, of course, I'm sending the same email out to the same, like, I'm sending the same email out to all these people. So I have in the sent folder, I go to my sent mail and I'll find the email I just sent out. I'll hit forward and then I'll take the next 50 people, drop it into the blind carbon copy, put to, put my email address delete the part in the subject line that's going to say forward you know, like I'm forwarding it I'm going, to, I'm going to delete that so that it, it appears that this is the original email and then I'll delete the in the body of the email I'll delete the first little part that shows that it was a forwarded email um, so it looks like a fresh brand new email and, and uh, I'll paste those 50 new people or 200 new people whatever and then hit send, go back to the Excel spreadsheet, um, change the font color to of, of those email addresses to red so that I know that I've sent it to those people. And, and, I, and I just keep doing that until I get to the bottom of this email spreadsheet list and everybody's red. Um, that's my way of getting it out to everybody. Um, so what happens when you, you send it from your Outlook? You know, when I was sending it from my Outlook, I was watching on the left column of my Outlook where it shows the inbox. And every time I would send an email, I would get these automatic replies and I would get these bounces back, you know, because I sent out these emails to 50 people and 10 of them bounced back right away because they had an auto reply message on them. Um, and what I did was I started sending sending the messages after five o'clock, so at like five o five, all the way, to, and I didn't finish till about five thirty. But from five o five to five thirty, ninety five percent of the people I wouldn't say ninety five percent, but if somebody's going to have an away message up, they're going to put the away message up after five o'clock. As they walked out the door, five o'clock, they were hitting that away message. So I was able to capture these away messages. And why are why are away messages so important? Away messages on July second, knowing that they're going into a day off on July third, um, most of our clients would have, hey, uh, contact my associate at this email address and this phone number if you have something urgent I'm, I'm on vacation or I'm off tomorrow reach out to my my boss you know here's my supervisor's email address <laughs> and so what that did was that allowed me to get all of their all of these other contacts to update our system and then in, in their auto replies a lot of times these people have email signatures so I was able to capture their email signatures, which had um, all of their job titles, their updated addresses and things like that. Uh, all this data that I haven't been able to capture before. Um, so this is where I'm going to stop it today. But th this is like a backstory of how to update these contacts in the most efficient way. Stay tuned in the next episode. I'm going to talk about how to do it. Um, but what happened was out of the 7,000 email addresses that I sent or emails that I sent, there were 1,700 that were in my inbox from auto replies and also from uh, emails that, that, that bounced back and didn't work anymore that had you know, been accumulating over the years. And there were also, um, there were also just 
straight up uh, uh, undeliverable emails that were fresh. So I'm going to talk about how to deal with all those. There were 1,700 of them, and I've figured out a way now to, the, to handle them in the most efficient way to find out where they are, find out where the client went to get their, get their updated information and get them back into the system so that we can continue to stay in front of them. Thanks so much for sharing and, and, and uh, sharing this podcast. If you liked it, hit subscribe and uh, share it with a friend. We'll see you on the next one. Make a contribution today. Thanks. Have a great day.